Hi, my name is Buma Aravamudan, and I'm an assistant professor of neurology at the Washington University School of Medicine. I'll be joined by Paul Gross, CEO and founder of the Cerebral Palsy Research Network, and together we'll be talking about our work characterizing the diagnostic preferences of adults with cerebral palsy and caregivers regarding how they view cerebral palsy diagnoses and etiologic diagnoses. We know that cerebral palsy is a clinical diagnosis independent of its etiology, and that's been a long-standing view from the cerebral palsy consensus definition. Despite this, we found that 40% of practitioners who care for people with cerebral palsy would not give a cerebral palsy diagnosis in the setting of a genetic etiology. So we wanted to know how the CP community felt about this. Did they agree that a cerebral palsy diagnosis could not be given together with an etiologic diagnosis? To answer this question, we surveyed people with cerebral palsy and their caregivers through two organizations the Simon Searchlight Foundation, and the Cerebral Palsy Research Network. All respondents were from North America, and we had a 34% responder rate, or 197 respondents. We found that the majority of people wanted to know the cause of their cerebral palsy, but less than half had actually been told the cause by a medical practitioner. And 68% of people that had a diagnostic preference would prefer carrying a cerebral palsy diagnosis together with an etiologic diagnosis, not one or the other. The reasons for this varied broadly, but one of the most common reasons cited was a desire for more knowledge, as is indicated in this quote, I feel like that would make the picture whole. To talk about this a little more, I'll invite Paul Gross, CEO and founder of the Cerebral Palsy Research Network. Hi, Dr. Bruma. Uh, I think I want to be clear that I'm going to speak to this as the parent of a 17-year-old boy with cerebral palsy. So my wife and I were very focused on gathering information about his condition. And I think as much information as we could hear, even if we didn't understand it necessarily scientifically, was very important to us to, to get the picture of our son and what his future might hold and to be able to be independent in our research and connection with other people about what it means and what should we do as parents. Thanks, Paul. I wonder if you could speak also to this other quote um, that was expressed by the minority of respondents, but felt to us like a very powerful point in our data. And this quote, for some parents, especially mothers, it would be comforting to know that there wasn't any blame on their part. Living with any guilt is or can be extremely difficult. I definitely can relate to that as the husband uh, to the mother of my children. I think what I saw with my wife is uh, it was so important to her to take care of her health and her pregnancy that she was very focused on the food that she ate, the sleep that she got, uh, her fluid intake, her the environment, things that were chemical smelling, anything, because she wanted to make sure she had absolutely the best outcome for our child. And so I, I think it's a natural thing for the mom to feel huge responsibility for that outcome. And I can really see how learning about a genetic etiology, as an example, would be a huge relief with the birth of a child that has special needs. Based on this information that Paul has described, we advocate for practitioners to deliver a CP diagnosis together with an etiologic diagnosis or multiple etiologic diagnoses whenever possible. If you have more questions about this work or would like to reach out to us, please go to the Cerebral Palsy Research Network website at cprn.org or feel free to reach out to us via Twitter. Thank you. Thank you.